Hey guys, welcome back to Emolition. I'm Emma, this is Emolition. Thank you so much for your patience with me after we finished Life is Strange together on the channel. It was an emotional time and then very quickly uh, the Elden Ring DLC came out when we were playing it or towards the end. So it was quite busy on the channel and um, I don't know if you know, if you're new to the channel uh, from Life is Strange, I also work full time as well as doing YouTube in the evening so i haven't had loads of time to make videos but i am working on getting an editor at the moment so i'm hoping that i'll be able to get videos out a bit faster uh, especially because i want to play life is strange 2 soon is it called life is strange 2 there's a few i need to look it up <laughs> i've had a fair bit of time now to decompress after finishing the game and just to warn you this is not going to be a very edited video i haven't even written any notes of all my thoughts which i i've been putting it off a little bit if i'm being honest because i wanted to write down some final thoughts and some final notes to actually make the video watchable but um i haven't so i'm going to be dredging my memories um from over a month ago uh, so just warning you if you wanted some concise intelligent thoughts probably click off this video because you're not going to get any <laughs> life is strange was such an experience i've never done a separate debrief video i don't think uh after finishing a series but like wow it was just a lot i don't think i've ever been so taken with a game emotionally and i know a lot of people connect to it for different reasons for me it was definitely max and her experience finding herself as a teenager her experience in school her love for the arts her being a little bit cringe it's all very relatable stuff um and i think even though i've obviously never been to an american school on account of being british um like a lot of the school experiences were quite familiar to me and um so yeah i think connecting with max on that level made it a lot more of a gut punch when things happened and i did mention in the episode where uh we have to decide whether to keep chloe um alive on the life support or let her go um that won her a lot i think just because of the close friendships i do have and um all of the ways i was thinking about how I've let people down in my life. So, and I think that Max felt a lot of that towards Chloe with like not contacting her enough and stuff. And you kind of have a mirror held up to you, uh, showing you your own inadequacies. And I think that's quite hard, especially when it's not something I've probably processed. Um, I did feel the need to call my friends after um, that episode and just say, hey, <laughs> I suck, I'm sorry I haven't been in touch as much as I could. So it definitely reminded me to just like, be a better friend and just be there. Cause it matters and it mattered to Chloe in every dimension, you know, in the crash or not, it mattered a lot to her. She just showed it in different ways, which I thought was interesting. I was trying to think of how to structure this debrief and I can't so I'm just gonna name some things that I liked about it and I will read all the comments of this video I know I'm not the best at going through my comments like I'm very up and down but um because it's more of a discussion I'm interested to hear what you think so first of all soundtrack I said to you guys early on in the series that like all the videos were getting demonetized because of the music and it was honestly worth it because the music was so good so so good and I'm definitely biased because um some of it was my favorite music like the band local natives it's always nice to hear them because i don't feel like a lot of people know who they are so it was like really cool to hear them in the game alt j again the music choices are like spookily um accurate to what i listened to when i was max's age uh sort of like 16 17 18 that's what i listened to so hearing the music while playing the game it was like spooky i think when the game first started it felt like a very coming of age teen movie and then i think as more stuff started to happen and the more messed up it got it started to feel like um i don't know more like a cautionary tale kind of game of like things that can go wrong and no matter how much you try to control them some things are just sort of written already like Lasanne Al Gabe, it is written, you can't change it. Again, when we tried to go back and help Chloe's dad, 
doesn't really work out does it <laughs> something else that stood out with regards to the music was how often the game allowed you to sit with the music like i can't remember which episode it was in but there was a moment where i didn't even realize i was able to control max i was just sat there like enjoying the music while we were on the bed with chloe and the way they like set that scene up was so warming in such a chaotic and oftentimes disturbing game that i just wanted to kind of sit with it which i thought was really nice and when i realized i could move i was like oh i kind of don't want to i'm kind of enjoying this a lot it feels like the game devs gave us a lot of opportunities to enjoy a moment of quiet and calm and just sort of joy through music in between kind of making horrendous decisions and bad things happening which is always nice it's nice to be given a break so yeah i thought that was really cool um i think something that i have been thinking about is how the game teaches you to kind of accept the decisions you've made and not necessarily regret everything moving forward being kind to people i think that's something i really tried to do especially with victoria early on like i really tried to be nice even though she is a fucking bitch <laughs> i really tried to do the right thing as much as i wanted to take a photo of her when she got like soaked by the water whatever it was i just thought there's no way this can be a good thing if we're cruel because things will come back to bite you. Like, have you seen the butterfly effect? It's very true. I think the main thing that stood out for me for the game and something I mentioned quite a lot was Max's emotional maturity and the way she supports her friends. I just thought was incredible. Like the way she supports Chloe, even though Chloe can often lash out and be maybe a wee bit unreasonable, um, and helps her try and find closure over Rachel Amber, uh, even though she doesn't even know who she is, uh, the way she supports Kate Marsh, and just, I feel like Max can really talk people down, like not even just literally talk them down off a ledge, but like she's really good at highlighting people's strengths and the way she is with Warren, I feel like is really sweet because he's obviously got some like self-esteem issues, I would say, and he's a little bit goofy and I feel like she's just so kind. Um, and obviously we, as the controller of her character, get a lot of say in the dialogue options and trying to be nice, but it really made me reflect on like my own emotional <laughs> maturity because I feel like I've only just got to the point Max is at, like as an adult and I don't know, obviously it's a game it's fine but it's just interesting when i was her age or like 18 i remember my friend going through a breakup at uni and all i could do was like the pat her with a broom they're there are you okay and i think i ordered her some noodles and put iCarly on or something because i just didn't know how to like support her emotionally and i look back on that and i think oh, you're an idiot like you're dumb it's like I think I really took a lot longer than um, than Max did to get to the point where I'm able to like support people <laughs> properly. So, um, but I just found that wonderful, really nice. Um, I loved it so much. The time travel aspect was something I had no idea about, like no clue, which is um, yet yeah, another win for living with your head in the sand because I hadn't had that, um, I hadn't been exposed to that element of the game. Like all I'd ever seen is the Polaroid cover didn't know what it was about any of the mechanics or anything like that but i really feel like that was such a nice surprise so it really changed the game for me literally so like mechanically i just found it really impressive it feels so warming i think i've used that word already but just the home screen uh, with the beautiful kind of like picky guitar music and so many of the scenes were so stunning it's amazing how such a beautiful lovely game can weave in so many like a colossal number of traumatic and fucked up things and still make you feel kind of cozy and hopeful i don't know it just feels really cozy and nice and i think the way they've constructed arcadia bay just feels so nostalgic in a way again never been to an american town like that never lived in a place like that but it feels like home for some reason like and i think making an effort to go and speak to like the residents about like the developments and all the evil capitalist overlords trying to like 
buy up the land and and make it gentrified and just ruin it basically i think i'm so glad i took the time to do that um i wish i'd read a bit more of max's journals earlier on because i think i missed some stuff and a bit of exposition as to what she was like but i you know i'll i'll play it again it's fine i really loved it i loved all the queer elements i think that is so important to see in games and i think it was done really well loved the setting of arcadia bay like i just said love the music love the vibes love the art direction loved the color grading <laughs> there was a few scenes i found really tricky like the end scene where you're going through and seeing all the visions of fucking mark dickface whatever his name was what was his name mark jefferson asshole um that i found stressful i don't think the game necessarily did like some of the stealthy um puzzle elements super well but i know there's like sequels aplenty so hopefully like that's got a bit smoother but overall definitely one of my favorite games i've ever played i thought it was incredible um it made me cry more than any games ever made me cry including the last of us which i thought was the worst cry i'd ever have at a game but i was wrong and yeah i loved it sorry i didn't come to this with like any kind of structure i should have just put this at the end of the video but i think i cried for like hours afterwards and i just haven't had time to process it yet but uh here we are uh please let me know like anything let's just chat about life is strange in the comments um obviously i'll play the next ones very soon like i said trying to get an editor on the go to get things out a bit faster um and also i did make a patreon while we were playing this series because it was all getting demonetized so i made a patreon just for anyone who wanted to support so you can still join that i'll post any new episodes of anything early for patreon subscribers so it's worth checking out if you're interested in early access to things and you'll also get access to the discord which is full of very lovely people who are wonderful and welcoming and we have good chats basically every day about games and silly shit so <laughs> but if not i will see you on here soon for more life is strange and um and yeah i thought it's fantastic i loved it and that's it that's all i have to say <laughs>